Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Anke Lindachts, Head of Investor Relations at Granke, and it is my pleasure to welcome you today to our Capital Markets Update. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to come here and join us in Frankfurt. At the same time, I would like to say a big welcome to those participants who are following us online. Today marks the first Capital Markets Update of Granke, and this is because we are looking ahead. We are returning to our strength. In the next few hours, you will get a granular view on how our company and our ambition will work. We describe our midterm outlook in detail and will elaborate on how we will deliver on our goals. We will kick off the CMU with a presentation by our CEO, Michael Bücker, and our CFO, Dr. Sebastian Hirsch. After that, at around noon Frankfurt time, we will take a short break. After that, you will have the opportunity to ask questions to both of them, either in person or remotely via the chat function. I would also like to encourage you to check out our CMU website, where you have access to the agenda, today's presentation, and all other materials. I would also like you to take notice of the disclaimer regarding forward-looking statements on page two of the presentation. That said, without further ado, I would like to hand over to Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wicker, the floor is yours. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome also from my side, especially to all of you that join us here uh, in Frankfurt. Uh, today is a very special day for all of us, for Grenke and as well for my colleague uh, Sebastian Hirsch and me. Because this is our first capital markets update. So again, thank you for, for joining us. At the annual press conference, I announced that Grenke would double both sales and earnings in 2024. And it is precisely this path back to growth and continued profitability that we will explain to you right now. And I will start with a brief review of our starting position. position. Building on this, I would like to explain the key pillars of our fast forward growth strategy for the coming years. And finally, we'll briefly discuss what you can expect from us in short term. But first, let's take a look into what Grenke stands for. What makes an entrepreneur? We believe it's courage more than anything else. Trying out new things and turning ideas into reality. This requires enthusiasm and sufficient liquidity. We offer both of these to companies through our financing solutions. Leasing is simple and opens up possibilities. You can lease just about anything. Complete office equipment, a smart production hall, or a modern practice. And even an e-bike. It works like this. The customer selects his products and decides to lease them from Grenke. Grenke concludes the purchase contract with the reseller, who in turn assumes the delivery and warranty. At the end of the basic lease term, the customer decides whether or not to acquire the asset for a residual amount, to return it into the economic cycle, or to continue leasing it. This results in higher sales for the reseller and the customer then regularly replaces its inventory with modern, lower emission and more efficient equipment and installations. A sustainable model. The goods replaced go back into the economic cycle. They are recycled or reused in a meaningful manner. This extends their lifetime in a resource-saving way. The better choice is often leasing. And the best choice for leasing is Grenke. Yes, 
Yeah, the video gave you a first impression that is underlined by a look on Grenke's history of more than two decades of being a listed company. Grenke is a successful company with a long tradition, with strong roots and with its origin as a family-run company. And after the IPO in the millennium year 2000, Grenke continued its growth curse. And I'm going so far back in history because some of you may not know Grenke well. Others, however, have been with us since 2000 and remember the most important stages of our prosperous development. For example, the acquisition of our own bank, now Grenke Bank, in 2009. Or in 2012, the establishment of our first branch outside Europe in Brazil. Or even our entry into the US market just two years ago. Like many other companies, the corona pandemic put a strain on Grenke. Added to this was a report of a short seller. And 2020 and 21 were therefore extremely challenging years for us. Perhaps the most difficult years since the foundation in 1978. But ladies and gentlemen, we are convinced that we have passed the bottom. Corona will certainly keep us busy for a long time to come, but now kept at a manageable level. The short attack and correlating special audits are behind us and Grenke is back to normality. And normality at Grenke means one thing above all, profitable growth. And based on what we know today, no serious negative effects on Grenke's business development are foreseeable, even as a result of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. And according to estimates, our business will grow sustainably. And here you can see what growth at Grenke means in numbers. Over 10% more new business volume every day since, every year, not day, every year since our IPO in 2000. Almost 11% more new contracts per year. Profit growth has been close to 9% year after year, despite the adverse developments of the last few years. Currently, about 1,800 people in 33 countries work for Grenke. And last but not least, our most important asset include our global network of around 30,000 specialist resellers. So what unique strength have made Grenke's success story possible? Above all, we are there when companies need financial freedom. And we are there when entrepreneurs want or need preserve their liquidity, especially in difficult economic times. Liquidity is critical and key. And we provide liquidity to SMEs around the globe. And several aspects make our offer unique. As global market leader in small ticket leasing segment, we are a strong and attractive partner. Our industry, product, and partner expertise is unsurpassed. Straightforward and rapid financing of assets for the self-employed, freelancers, and small and medium-sized enterprises. That is the customer experience, experience with which we inspire. It only takes a few minutes from application to release of funds. Starting from our home market, Germany, our ambitions were strongly directed beyond national borders from day one. Our footprint in Europe is now extensive. And this is something that none of our competitors who tend to be located in single countries can achieve. However, let me emphasize once again that we have no exposure either to the Ukraine or to Russia and we will remain strong here. And we will become stronger in markets in which we have only recently established a presence which promise great potential, like Canada, Australia, and above all, in the US. And as a competitive environment, our position is unique. 
no one can identify and address new topics as good as we do across the markets. We have a reseller network with 30,000 qualified partners worldwide. And at the same time, we are independent of banks or other financial institutions, as well as manufacturers. And we finance almost everything our customers need for their daily business, from laptops to telephone systems, from medical equipment to e-bikes. Here's one. <laughs> Even objects that seem unusual at first glance, such as a forklift truck or a new dentist chair. Our business model is based on the philosophy of an open competitive architecture. And this means that we do not expect any ex ex exclusivity from our sales partners because we are very competitive and we are convincing with our performance. Yeah, and we invented small ticket leasing, and we remain true to this very successful business. It's what we do best. By our partner network and our direct sales, we serve more than 700,000 customers worldwide. And in doing so, we have convincing advantages. Having local competence and a feel for trends and new markets. Focus on added value on our customers and great resilience even in times of crisis. We have more than impressively demonstrated successful performance in the last two years. Furthermore, a stable refinancing foundation. Yeah, and last but not least, being a pioneer in designing digital processes. The strong foundation of our object portfolio is IT. Small ticket IT leasing is in our DNA. IT objects are making up almost 70% of all leased assets in 2021. However, we can proudly say our leasing solutions <coughs> can finance almost everything our customers need for their daily business. <coughs> and you can see a significant diversification of our portfolio in the past years. Besides machinery and equipment, medical technologies and green and first green assets like yeah, e-bikes were added to our portfolio. That is for the future development of our portfolio, mega trends require substantial investments of SME to transform their businesses. And that's we were uh, expect our asset portfolio to change. Our customer portfolio is broad and strong. We address a wide range of industries, starting with commercial dealers, manufacturers, and research over to engineering and services. Our customer sectors represent the whole variety of SME businesses in our markets. We finance the backbone of these economies. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, what is our market? We are financing small tickets. And this small ticket leasing was an invention of our founder, Wolfgang Grenke, 40 years ago. Small means that a single contract covers a volume of up to 25,000 25, euros. On average, at Grenke, a single contract covers about 8,000 euros. Of course, this is a niche market. But based on our experience over decades, our niche accounts for about 5% of the total leasing market. In total, therefore, our addressable market internationally has a volume of many billions of euros. After America, Europe, Granke's home market, is in the second place and Australia in fourth. In other words, these are the largest leasing markets in the world for SME small ticket leasing as well. And Grenke has already made its entry there. And in this niche, we have only few competitors. There is not a single one with a comparable global offer for SME. And this makes us the global number one in small ticket leasing. And for the global leasing market as a whole, a volume of around 2.1 trillion 
was recently forecast for 2026. Based on 21, this corresponds to an annual growth averaging almost 12%. Considering the effects of the war against Ukraine, the growth in big ticket, like perhaps aircraft leasing, yeah, may be judged under other aspects. But this is not our market. But the leasing market is not only growing, it's also undergoing a dynamic process of, process of change. We are currently experiencing a phase of disruption and uncertainty everywhere. However, liquidity is particularly important for small companies, especially in difficult times. It is not at least this growing need for a solution to secure liquidity that is driving growth in leasing. Traditional banking services are becoming less important, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises. Flexibility and the integration of services is becoming more essential for companies to make quick and efficient use of their asset investments. And leasing fills this gap in demand. There's a clear trend towards usage and service-oriented financial models. In other words, service and use instead of ownership. The growth drivers in leasing from which GrandQ benefits are also include technical, social and political megatrends. Potential financial markets for GrandQ are emerging from these trends. And most importantly, climate change requires a comprehensive transformation. The investments required in this century are reaching unimaginable dimensions. They will have to be financed. And leasing make a significant and probably growing contribution to this. Aging societies and medical progress require increasing investments in technology and infrastructure. Automation of processes is further accelerating by artificial intelligence and robotic technologies. Yeah, from e-bikes to charging stations, we are only at the beginning of a high growth market. At the beginning of 2021, there were around 7.1 million electric bikes in household, households, 20% more than just one year earlier. The Internet of Things enables further possibilities for smart asset usage and pay per use financing products. And advancing digitization also requires small and medium-sized enterprises to adapt their business models and technical equipment. And we are in the middle of this because all of this has to be financed in a way that preserves liquidity as far as possible. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen Grenke's strong position from which we are starting into as the next dimension of growth. Now I would like to explain to you the growth strategy we have defined for the coming years. How we intend to achieve our ambitious goals. In detail, we have set ambition targets, ambitious targets for 2024. And you can see them on the right-hand side. First of all, there is 3.4 billion euros in leasing new business. We are also moving into new dimensions in terms of plant profit after taxes with an announced 140 million euros. And in the left-hand column, you can see the three strategic approaches to achieve these goals. First, expanding and diversifying our global presence. What's, what does that mean? It means that the more than 30 countries in which we are already active, we will take a differentiated approach depending on the situation. Our second strategic approach is to achieving our growth targets is to expand our asset portfolios. As we have done in the past, we will continue to grow in line with the needs and wishes of our customers. We are subject to nearly no restrictions in terms of objects we can lease. And at the same time, we will increase our efforts to proactively develop new product fields. And thirdly, and finally, strict cost discipline made possible, above all, 
by the consistent use of digital opportunities, is one of the core tasks, one of our most important ongoing tasks. Ladies and gentlemen, as announced, I will outline the content elements that we will lead us to the goals I have just described. My colleague Sebastian Hirsch will explain our key financial figures afterwards. Since the topic of ESG, I will play a major, will play a major role both in terms of the yeah, new market potential for us and for our own footprint, and I would, would then like to provide you with some more details here as well. Let's go on with the overview of our global growth strategy. We have promised to double our new business in leasing, and this is what we aim to deliver by 2024. And this puts us back on track against the best year of our history before we had the experience, uh, the corona pandemic and the short seller attack. Let me now zoom in on our program and how we will deliver these results. But first, I need some water. <laughs> Yeah, as I indicated in the beginning, the addressable SME small ticket leasing market for Grenke is approximately 5% of the total leasing market. And this chart of the estimated numbers of SME in 2024 clearly shows the regional concentration of our core target group. Yeah, and it is easy to see how great our opportunities are in the European and North American market. In our established markets, especially in Europe, we will con continue to grow strongly with the market and expand into our new segments in these, in these markets. And we will continue to focus our structures and processes on efficiency and customer experience. There, the focus is clearly on profitable growth. In countries where we have only recently become active, for example, US, Australia, we will make targeted investments. Here, our focus is primarily on accelerating the development of the markets and rapidly increasing market share. And we have furthermore identified, identified another cluster, markets where we earn good money, but where we already have the position that grants us sustainable profitability. Brazil would be a, a good example. But Sebastian, why don't you continue to detail the country analysis? Yeah, thank you, Michael, and also a warm welcome from my side. And we appreciate that you take the time to join us today, especially here in Frankfurt. Michael has just talked about our addressable markets of SMEs in the world. Let me show how well Granke is already positioned at the moment. Because Granke is so unique, it is not easy to precisely define the market for our niche the small-scale investment segment. But we can approach a relative few and use public data as well as our experience. And the best public data available is the Global Leasing Report. This is based on the world's leasing market statistics. These data includes, of course, cars, private clients, and big tickets. So when we start using overall data, of course, we will need to bear that in mind. Let me call this like a statistical error. But the good thing about this statistical error is it is persistent since decades. So whenever we draw conclusions from this data to our small ticket SME business, the error is comparable for each data set. For this reason, we can use the overall data for the global leasing market as a steady reference. So let me show you the world's top 20 countries in terms of leasing. The figures are based on 2020 statistics and are calculated on the new business volume in billion euro. As you can see, Grenke is already present in 15 of the 20 largest leasing markets in the world. 
Today, we don't want to talk about the five countries in which we are not yet represented, especially as we rule out a future expansion into Russia and China. So let's focus on the enormous potential in the 15 markets where we are in today. America, Canada and Australia are our future core markets, as Michael mentioned. Those three markets are among the world's top 10 leasing markets. And for us, America, Canada and Australia are having a huge potential as we started operations in the recent past, which I would like to explain to you in more detail. So let's move to a more technical chart. First, I would like to explain the axis of this matrix. The vertical, the overall leasing volume in billion euro per market. It's based exactly on the data on our previous slide. And the horizontal, the grand in new leasing business, also 2020, in million euro. And you think that both axes have no linear scaling. It's a logarithmic one, so we can show different market sizes in the same matrix. And the first bubble here is our home market, Germany, with a leasing new business of nearly 480 million euro in 2020 by Grenke on the horizontal. And the total leasing market was in the area of 65 billion euro on the vertical in 2020. And so we should expect data showing up for the Grenke countries over all the world in a scatter plot, a distribution cloud. And it is a cloud with a more or less stable correlation between the total leasing market size and Granke's new business. Some smaller markets are missing because they don't appear in the global leasing statistic. And the bubble size is a reference to the global leasing market size by country. And the biggest one, our newest market, the US, show up next to the distribution cloud on the top left. Because we've started our US business in Phoenix only two years ago. So it's more than fair to expect a move from the top left to the top right over the next few years. As Michael presented earlier, clustering data is quite helpful also in that chart. So we cluster our markets according to size. There we arrive at three large blocks. Our established core markets, our future core markets, and thirdly, our hidden stars. America is standing out the crowd with the greatest potential. Accordingly, our strategic priority lies here. Our long-term focus is further Australia and Canada with the obvious potential to move forward on the right-hand side of our graph. Our takeaway is Granke. The next dimension, the best, is yet to come. And right in the middle of that cloud, you can find Belgium. So why I'm talking about Belgium? Because Belgium is one of our hidden stars. The business started in 2006 and delivered with roughly 50 million euro new business in 2019, a good portion to our new business. Belgium was and is successful. Let's turn to the figures. The start in Belgium was typically, typical first 10 years for a new Granke country with a first branch. This is shown here, with a step-by-step -step rising new business volume on the left hand. Over the time of 10 years, our dynamic growth, despite macroeconomic impacts. In that period, for example, the financial crisis 2008-2009. And on the right-hand side, we see the development of contribution margin 2 and cost, with, this, with a clear opening pair of skizers. Belgium is like a role model. It has role model status. It serves a good benchmark for several new countries, especially within the first 5 to 10 years. Regardless of overall size of the leasing market, this is a driver for scalability and growth potential during a country's second stage. So this development of a start is representative for the past, for today, and for the future. And Belgium is as well a comparable example for our start in America. Because the number of SMEs with a bit more than 600,000 is equal to Arizona. 
That said, the potential for Granke in America is clear because the US market in terms of SMEs is the 50 foot of Arizona or the 50 foot of Belgium. But as always, because it's part of our DNA, we move forward gradually. There is potential for growth in each region, in our core and established markets as well as in our smaller, hidden, well-performing markets. So to double our business of 21 within the next three years will be driven by our established markets. But at the same time, we are preparing the dimension after the next to be ready for further growth. That's why the regional distribution of our new business will not substantially change from year to year. We expect a healthy evolution to a more diverse portfolio countrywise. And the importance and the share of the US will increase the future development in North America to a double digit number. And this will only come true if we keep pushing the market, exploring investment trends and growing faster than the global leasing market. And not only do we have a unique position in terms of our global footprint, but also in the competitive environment in our ecosystem. As already mentioned, our reseller partner network with 30,000 qualified partners worldwide gives us a head start. We finance almost everything that our customers need for their daily business. Further, our business model is based on, a, on the philosophy of an open competitive architecture, as Michael mentioned. So we are able to covering trends and having the right solutions for small investments for SMEs worldwide. With our initiatives, we will leverage our business based on partners and our customers with digitalization, awareness and presence to our reseller network, as well as solutions, convenience and experience for SMEs to solving customer value. And those leverages will widen the range of the addressable market for our leasing in each country. Our position is unique because we combine object know-how and competence of finance for our customers and partners. I'm handing the floor back to Michael, who will explain our growth strategy based on the different, differentiated market criteria. Michael, please. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, to sum up, our differentiated market approach. First, we want to benefit from outstanding growth in our core markets. Second, we invest into new growth markets like the US. And third, we want to maintain our profitable position in those markets that display strong profit contribution but have softer growth expectations. And across all markets, new megatrends will support our growth for example, health and ecological enhancing assets. And also, our customers are expecting the next wave of Grenke efficient digital process. And both is a must to support our growth, but also gives us a unique basis for development most of our peers cannot match. As you have seen, our core markets make up for approximately 75% of our new business. You will benefit significantly from the growth of the markets that, however, also demand new products and asset types as well as the next wave digital solutions. And we will introduce our program Fast Forward Digital that will develop these new convenient customer journeys, also aid us to improve our efficiency in delivering our products and continuously improve our product and, and innovate our, our object portfolio. A new hub and branch concept in the established core markets will target a concentration of competence and know-how. And Sebastian will show you the details on how these strategic initiatives will help our PNL in a minute. The Granke way of developing markets always implied leveraging our core, core skills into the development core market, into the developed core markets into the future ones. This is the approach that made us so successful and enabled the fast, profitable growth. 
And we intend to continue to replicate this success and invest in our future core markets, namely in the US, Canada and Australia. And we will extend our reseller relationships in these markets. And as part of our Grenke way, we will of course leverage the best of digital processes and customer experience in these markets as well. And we laid out already that our hidden markets are an important profit contributor to our bottom line. Hence, we will clearly want to maintain our position in these markets. And that said, we will also aim to further improve our cost to delivery. And we will improve customer experience by a careful concentration of support process. However, as you remember, we are dealing with local SME leasing customers and we will keep our personal customer experience in the market. We see a big opportunity to be at the forefront of next generation asset leasing, namely those businesses that foster ecological health, for instance, green and circular economy. Amongst these, we see big opportunities in clean tech, in e-mobility or a loading station, just to name a few. Additionally, we include new opportunities in social health, medical assets. And Grenke was the first not only to develop SME, small ticket leasing, but also provide for these services in an automated digital way. And therefore, we have launched our Fast Forward Digital Program and will touch all key processes that are customer related and systematically improve customer experience, like in immediate decision making or easy touch, easy touch booking. And clearly, and this is corresponding benefit for, also for us. This will allow us to reduce cost to deliver and accordingly a big lever to achieve our profitability improvements. In total, our projected growth path towards 24 will be between 15 to 20 percent per annum. And again, very much in line with our best year before the pandemic and the short seller attack. By the sheer dominance of our current core markets, DACH, Western and Southern, Southern Europe, this growth rate, growth rate will be seen in these regions as well. Conversely, in our future core markets in the Americas and Australia, coming from a yeah, smaller base, we will scale much faster. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, as you see, Grenke is perfectly located to re-establish our growth path. We are the market leader in a fast-growing, distinct market niche for SME small ticket leasing. And we have the cap capability and determination to expand into the very sizable opportunities outside of Europe, namely US, Canada, and Australia. Plus, only we, can develop skills and capabilities at scale in these new asset categories that likely are to foster growth in our core markets. Leasing of assets that support the green revolution and medical treatment, thus supporting ecological and societal health. So this is why we state our growth and profitability targets to double our new business to 3.4 billion in the next two and a half years, keep our CM2 margin stable at 17%, thus then double our profit to around 140 million euros, and all this with a solid equity ratio by 16%. Sebastian, over, for you, over to you for value creation and financials. Yeah, thank you. So let's start with a very important chapter. It's about value. Value creation and financials. Following what we've just heard on our fast forward growth strategy, it is my pleasure to walk you through our financial structure and planning. Within the next minutes, I want to share some insights into how we think about the business and its profitability. 
By doing so, we want to further contribute a high level of transparency and explanatory value. As Michael has pointed out, we have, seen, we have set ambitious goals for Grenke. As we are emerging into a post-pandemic world, we will maintain our momentum and continue to support our customers and significantly grow our new business in leasing. In doing so, our strategic covers three quantitative and thus financial dimensions. Profitability, resilience, and long-term value. So let me deep dive into each of these dimensions. First things first. So we start with profitability. I would like to share a brief video with you. In this video, we outline the economics of our leasing business and the cornerstones how we are accounting for it. You will see based on our predictable business model, visibility on our future profitability is very high. So, here we go. In this short video, we want to show how a lease contract impacts Grenke's balance sheet and P&L, and why the visibility on our future profitability, our financial position and our financing needs with matching maturities is high. Grenke provides fast, flexible and convenient small-ticket leasing solutions to SMEs. Let's assume our customer, an SME, buys an e-bike for its employee for €5,000 at a reseller and chooses Grenke to finance the transaction. We refer to this amount as the acquisition price for a lease contract. We have some initial direct costs initiating the new contract, which are added to the acquisition price. The sum is what we refer to as the net investment value. Under the lease agreement, the customer makes lease payments to Grenke over the term of the lease. The amount is not only based on the net investment value, but also on our experience with the reseller, the customer, the object category, and our pricing policy and data-based risk measurement. In our example, the customer leasing the e-bike agrees to pay €360 Euro each quarter for the next four years, which corresponds to €5,760. Euro. While we have defined the net investment value of €5,185, Euro, we also need to estimate the residual value, that is, the cash flows after the regular lease term. For instance, if the lessee wants to buy the e-bike he once leased. It is not only an accounting obligation under IFRS, but it also allows us to have transparency on all expected cash flows related to a lease contract. In our case, we estimate that the e-bike will have a residual value equal to 10% of the acquisition price, so 500 euro. The sum of all contractual lease payments, including the residual value in IFRS, is also called gross investment. It is not discounted to be a present value. Now we can calculate the implicit internal interest yield for this series of lease payments. It is the interest rate at which the present value of all future lease payments, including the estimated residual value, equals the net investment value. In our example, this is a yearly rate of 9.7%. The net present value as sum of discounted cash flows within that interest yield is exactly the net investment value at the beginning. This amount is called lease receivable. In our case, again, amounting to 5,185 euro. Whenever Grenke closes a lease agreement, it does not recognize the lease product in the balance sheet, but rather accounts for the lease receivable. At the end of a regular lease term, without any extraordinary events, the value of the lease receivable will be the estimated residual value. In each quarter, the lease contract generates an interest income, which is based on the outstanding lease receivable, generating income at the internal yield. 
Our customers' quarterly lease payments are split between the interest component and the amortization of the leasing receivable. The sum of all generated interest income over the lease term is equal to the difference between the gross and net investment value. Due to the periodic nature of lease payments, each lease contract inherently has a lagged effect on our P&L. This is true for all new business generated in prior and current reporting periods. A substantial proportion of future interest income is locked in by the existing leasing portfolio. For example, in the year of the new e-bike lease, the majority of interest income was driven by new business for which we have concluded contracts in the previous three years and only a small percentage by new business contracts from that year. Therefore, the visibility on our future profitability is high and investors and other stakeholders alike benefit from this high level of predictability. Most finance leases concluded provide for full economic cost recovery. This means that payments made by the lessee during the lease period, including any guaranteed residual values, exceed the acquisition price and contract costs, showcasing the stability of Grenke's leasing business model. Given this time lag, our value-based management approach is based on a total contract lifetime view to evaluate our leasing business performance. To this end, we rely on two imputed key financial performance indicators and thus decision momentum per contract. Contribution margin 1 or CM1 and contribution margin 2, CM2. To come up with the contribution margin 1, we discount the contractually agreed quarterly payments by the lessee, 360 euro, at our imputed refinancing rate and then subtract the net acquisition price and any dealer commission. What about the contribution margin 2? Purely technically speaking, the CM2 accumulates the periodic operating income from a leasing contract and represents its present value. In contrast to the CM1, the CM2 not only factors in the estimated residual value, but also the estimated additional earnings from the service business and the lifetime expected credit loss. As you have seen, because of the periodic nature of lease payments, each lease contract has a lack of PL impact. But each lease contract positively contributes our PL during the entire time of a lease. So let me focus on what we've seen in the video and transform it into an indicative template for a several new business portfolio. So we can see that on that slide, and we start on the left hand with a new business, new business 100, as a reference for a single contract or maybe a portfolio. And that new business will bring us 17% or here 17 contribution margin too. It's in line with our expectation and with our long-term guidance to achieve a contribution margin too of 17%. And as shown in the video, that CM2 is corresponding directly with our operating income. And here, the accumulated operating income is 18.1%. Why 18.1%? Because the CM2 is a net present value and the accumulated operating income is without any discounting. So the reference of 17% CM2 is 18.1% 18, 18 operating income. And shown on the other side of the graph is the p and impact over six years. And six years are quite important for our portfolio because the average lease term is 48 months, means nearly four years, but we have also contracts running five or six years. So looking to an overall portfolio, a new business portfolio, we have to take into account six years for an indicative projection. And in the table under the chart, you can find for each line of our operating income the impact to our IFRS P&L. 
and you see it's quite different. The second year is the most important year from a value base because the leasing receivable is at peak. Why? The first year is here calculated quarter, quarter, quarter means 25 in average for each quarter so that the new business portfolio for a year is building up. And that's why the interest income, the net interest income is here at peak. Same in the expected credit loss. Here you see the peak uh, as negative impact on the PL in the first year because of the expected credit loss calculation under IFRS. We have to take into account that expected credit loss. And the third line is the result of service business, quite stable with a number of running contracts. May you are aware of that in our portfolio. And the last, the others, that are two components. At first, the uh, new business uh, results mean the earnings from new business. That's in the first period because of the initial direct costs. And the rest, year two to year six here, is the impact on after sales. And we see here also there is a lacked impact in the PL. At first, it becomes negative. At the end, the cumulated impact, when we met our estimated residual value, the overall impact is zero. And thanks to this, we would like to have a look to our existing portfolio. Maybe you are surprised by what you see, but that's exactly what we aim for. I would like to invite you to change perspectives. And it's not a U-turn, it's just 90 degrees. And it looks like a Christmas tree, right from the Black Forest in front of our headquarters in Baden-Baden. Healthy and well symmetrically shaped. What you see on the left-hand side is our existing leasing portfolio represented by the leasing receivables according to IFRS. From the bottom is beginning in 2022, to the top at 2026. The dark colors close to the trunk of the tree represent the new business recently contracted. And the far we reach out to the branches, the tips of the branches, the older the contracts are. And the right hand is the maturity structure of our funding mix, divided up by the three pillars of funding. Here we will continue our well-diversified strategy which is a substantial competitive benefit. And besides equity, that three financial debt pillars are unsecured funding, retail customer deposits with Granke Bank, as well as asset-based funding. And the relative importance of each of these pillars could change as we continue to take advantage of temporary pricing differentials between individual pillars to optimize our overall funding costs. Our maturity profile for the next years is well balanced, especially following our recent issuance of a 150 million euro bond with maturity in 24. And with this issuance, we have proven that investors remain fully engaged in our bonds, as we had more than 70 investors in the order book. So the Christmas tree is a result of a matching maturity for the funding, essentially based on the assets our leasing receivables. And our currently contracted leasing portfolio will deliver 600 million euro interest income. And building on our matching maturities funding strategy instead of maturity transformation, the resulting cumulative interest expense amounts to 150 million euro. And that's resulting in 450 million euro outstanding net interest income that our current portfolio will deliver until 26. All locked in already today. And this interest income is the main component of our embedded value, which amounts to 1.6 billion euro per end of 2021. 34.4 euro per share, based only on the existing portfolio. And of course, we want to go beyond that. And the light green bars represent a projection of our new business and its resulting leasing receivables in the future. We want to share with you our ambitions for growth in sales and new business volume. This is a layout you might be more familiar with since we used that before. Same numbers displayed horizontally, fast forward for the next five years. And the dark line divides the bars into existing portfolio below and the new business above that line. This is based 
exactly on our planning. The first light green boxes above the line represent what we already recorded, the new business volume of Q1 22, fully in line with our planning, it's locked in. And despite the normal gradually decrease of the existing portfolio, the overall portfolio is building up. The basis of our future earnings, which is initially expressed in the CM2. In a nutshell, there is a CM2 of 2.7 billion euro for the new business of the next five years. I'm sure you will agree that this is already a strong number. Now let's look to the relevant KPIs we use to steer our business and which are basically part of our projection. You might remember the slide from our analyst conference for the full year's result 2021. We continue to focus on our contribution margins as the main driver of our future operating income. But let's start with the bars on the bottom of the slide. The average ticket size per leasing contract. We expect to gradually increase the average ticket size compared to 2021. We keep our focus on small tickets across regions, across all industries and SMEs, and across investment trends. So we expect an average ticket size below 10,000 euro, which also implies that the half of our investments are 5,000 euro or smaller, same as today. So the example we saw in the video structurally stands for a representative leasing contract independent from the object type. We also intend to incrementally increase the risk appetite for new business. Of course, it will increase the average expected credit loss that we calculate for each leasing contract. We are aiming for a level of about 5.5%, close to a pre-COVID level. That said, we have full confidence in our instruments to measure risk. The increase in expected credit loss will be mirrored in a corresponding increase in our CM1 margin, which we expect to extend above 12%. From a long-term perspective, the CM1 ratio should be more or less on a stable level, as it was in the past. And all this will directly impact the CM2 margin. Our midterm target continues to be approximately 17%. And taking into account the former figures, because it's all connected and will drive our future earnings. To complete a P&L projection, we also need the cost perspective. So we are often talking about new business earnings and contribution margins. In addition to all these important KPIs, costs and operational leverage have always been important for us. <coughs> cost discipline, as we call it in Germany, is one driver of our success. We want to keep the leadership in managing small tickets efficiently and will manage our cost income ratio down to a lower level, below 45% on the long run. That's what we aim for, but step by step. First, I would like to show you how to measure the operating leverage and the cost income ratio for our operating business. To get more transparency regarding the cost-income ratio and the cost structure, we are focusing on the operating costs on the IFRS P&L. So there's no extraordinary impact of other costs, etc., included. For the income, we are taking the elements of the operating income in accordance to IFRS 2, but adjusted by the risk provisions and settlement of claims. So the cost-income ratio is free of any risk provisioning and free of other earnings. So let's focus on the figures. At first, the income as a denominator for the cost income ratio. You see that in the upper ellipsis. It's driven by our growth in volume and the CM2 development, as shown before, excluding the risk. You should keep that in mind. And to analyze the group cost income ratio, two types of cost cluster are material. First, staff costs, and second, SG&A costs. 
And in that type of cost, it's crucial to distinguish local costs and costs on a group level. And local costs here are costs for serving customers and partners, typically costs of sales or costs of a branch. And at group level, we are talking about costs for IT and supporting the local entities as well as overheads. At the end, we merge into an operating cost income ratio. And to be honest, this is not 100% matching with the cost income ratio we published based on the full PL so far. But to project our business and to prove the scalability of our business, that's the adequate view. In the past, we've managed to operate with a cost income ratio that was mostly in the lower 40s percentage range. Last year, due to ongoing investments, extraordinary expenses, and a decreased portfolio, the ratio had increased temporarily but we expect to return to a cost-income ratio of around 45% by 24. In the longer term, we believe a further reduction below that level is realistic. In line with our commitment to and our responsibility for our staff, which we see as a major driver for our continued success, we expect a stable ratio here. Therefore, the bulk of our planned midterm efficiency increases will be attributable to the SGNA component of our expenses. And that view includes all sustainable investments in further digital transformation, in sustainable internal control systems, and the right sales infrastructure for driving growth. Driving growth beyond 24, beyond Europe, and well beyond 3 billion new business. With that, let me move to illustrate two key sensitivities of our PL. In recent months, inflation rates and interest rates have already risen sharply worldwide. The pressure on the central banks is high, and given the geopolitical situation, a turnaround is not in sight, at least not in the short term. What does this perspective mean for Granke? Rising interest rates as well as inflation will drive a positive change for our demand, as Michael just described. But let's move to the financial impacts. First, interest rate sensitivity. We see no really lasting impact of interest rate changes on our profitability. Since we do not engage in maturity transformation, but pursue funding strategy that matches the maturities. Our existing leasing portfolio is effectively and fully hedged against changes in rates. Therefore, our symmetric Christmas tree is like a guarantee. Further interest rate developments could only affect the portfolio to be contracted in the future, so our new business. And however, we anticipate that our leasing rates will fluctuate as rates in the markets evolve, allowing us to effectively pass on potential increase in funding costs to our leasing pricing. Secondly, I would like to cover inflation sensitivity. We expect that our business is largely resilient to any rise in inflation. While obviously some of our internal costs will increase in response to higher inflation. But the higher terminal value of leasing object will compensate such internal cost increase. And again, the total portfolio lifetime is relevant for us. So I would like to move to the second element, our resilience. Here we cover our cash flow and the way of calculating risk, taking risk, and going for risk provisioning. Starting with the cash flow. The strong portfolio we've seen in the embedded value is also settling down in a strong cash flow. As you will see on this chart, we have been consistently cash generating in our ongoing business activities. This holds true even during the COVID-19 pandemic. And also going forward, we will manage our business conservatively and with the objective of continued positive and strong cash flow generation. Funding with matched maturities is at the core of this pursuit. It adds to the resilience of our business model, even in a challenging market environment. Going forward, we see also in funding the next dimension. Senior unsecured bonds and that issuance will be a key pillar of our funding strategy. 
with the expected growth in our leasing portfolio, we are in a position to preparing a benchmark size bond of 500 million euro in an upcoming transaction. Because our quarterly cash inflow is strong enough to cover a 500 million maturity in the future. Our focus will continue to be on the three to five years tenor in line with our term match funding strategy. In terms of resilience, I would like to address our credit risk position, credit risk in line with our leasing receivables. Since decades, we have been collecting data and experience linked to payment behavior, bad debt collections, and recoveries for non-performing leasing receivables of SMEs worldwide. On the left-hand side of the chart, you can see that over the past years, the expenses for settlement of claims and risk provisions and because of the pandemic in 2020, it increased stronger than the volume of leased assets. However, as actual losses turned out to be less than initially expected, the loss ratio has decreased substantially already last year. For this year, we confirm in our guidance that we expect a loss ratio between 1.4 and 1.7%, in line with levels we had seen prior to the pandemic. And we feel comfortable with this level given the exceptionally good payment behavior of our customers and our strong portfolio quality. And during this entire time period, our risk assessment has proven to be highly accurate, as you can see on the right side of the chart. Consistently, the deviation between actual and expected losses was lower than 0.5% of the net acquisition cost of all years since 2017. So, the year 2020 might serve us like a good vintage wine. Let me underline that clear message. Our goal is not to meet a loss rate of 1.5% per year or an exact expected loss for the lifetime of 5.5%. We want to calculate the risk for each request and price a risk premium in a balanced ratio between risk and contribution margin. And consequently, that means we would like to have a low deviation between our calculation at the beginning and the real expenses at the end of the lifetime for each portfolio. And for our calculation, the total term of a leasing contract or a portfolio is crucial, as shown in our video. The periodical view is a necessary accounting need, but not the best economic perspective to the portfolio. Our equity is a result of our past profitability and at the same time key for our resilience. Ultimately, it is expression of value, portfolio value of the past. With more than 19%, our IFRS equity ratio continues to remain comfortable above our target level of 16%. This gives us range and space for future growth. So if we simply assume that 16% is enough to cover all the requirements we have to fulfill. Then we are talking about roughly 3% free equity in minimum. And to stay conservative, let's take a low balance sheet volume of 6 billion euro. So we are talking about 3% of 6 billion euro. We are talking about an equity of 180 million euro from a balance sheet perspective. And with that 100 million euro equity, we can back more than a billion leasing receivables, staying for the 16% requirement. In other words, we can stretch our balance sheet by a billion with our existing equity ceteris paribus. And it will be supported additionally by future retained earnings. And that strong equity is driving also our embedded value and the economic view to the equity, the existing portfolio value. In closing the value dimension, let me move on to the development of our embedded value. Until 2018, it has been steadily increasing until it remained broadly stable as our portfolio grows stalled. We expect to resume our growth path in the coming years based on the fast forward growth strategy. As already mentioned, when we published our full year's figures, 
our stock has been trading at a discount relative to the embedded value recently. On this chart, we are putting this relationship in a longer-term context. You can see that historically, the market had valued us at premium to embedded value, a testimony to our growth prospects. We are intent on earning back this level of market confidence and trust based on the growth strategy we have outlined to you today. And we want to deliver our figures quarter by quarter, consistently and steadily. Let me, me stress this again. It's our goal, our clear goal to raise our embedded value stronger than our new business volume. With that, over again to Michael for the ESG chapter. Yeah, let's turn now to the area of ESG. Leasing can be a, a catalyst for a sustainable business. And this is because leasing offers an incentive to use equipment and machinery of the latest and thus most energy efficient generation. No one knows the ecological footprint of leasing object as well as we do and can factor it into the entire business relationship. For more than 20 years, Grenke has been forwarding used leasing objects for professional secondary recycling. And this is an essential building block for practice recycling management. And thanks to our object and industry expertise, coupled with our knowledge of the timing of replacement investments, we are able to provide tailored support for the transformation process in small and medium-sized enterprises. And this is why we want to become the enabler for sustainable SME economy. And we do so in all three dimensions. Climate and environment, social contribution, responsibility and trust. And we enable the transformation to an environmentally conscious future of offering sustainable financial services and facilitating green investment choices. And we promote equal opportunities and innovation for our customers, partners, and employees alike. And we set transparent communication and create a sustainable corporate structure. As pointed out, we are reporting assets and vol volume development on a country and regional basis. And this stems from the firm belief that our markets are local in nature and that we are optimally positioned to develop these new opportunities for Grenke. And we see ESG as an important lever of growth. First, we will expand our asset portfolio towards new medical and green economy objects. Moreover, we intend to design clear ESG criteria for our leasing contracts. And therefore, we have launched a cooperation with the KIT, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, and the AFB, a partner of remarketing of equipment to explore new possibilities for an optimized leasing journey in the sense of ESG. And regarding our own footprint, Grenke strives for responsible operations to define a clear pathway with meet regulatory obligations. And we set ourselves a clear path towards carbon neutrality by 2025. Current measures are already taking place to analyze and reduce our corporate footprint, the scope one and two emissions, which for our biggest country, Germany, is approximately 3.2 thousand tons of carbon emissions, which is by the nature of our business a small number. What are we doing especially in terms of social issues? As a financing partner for small and medium-sized enterprises, we support a segment with limited access to financial services. And this is how we expand our customer base, by creating transparency about green investments and seeking fair cooperation, we strengthen and expand our partner portfolio. And we are aware of the crucial importance of compliance for our customers and, and partners. And we aim to build and expand trust with our stakeholders through maximum transparent communication. 
And as you can see here, we take our responsibility seriously in all dimensions. With that, I hand over to Sebastian, who will introduce to you an innovative ESG project from Grenke that we are very proud of, and it's called GSI. <laughs> Yes, I would like to guide you through our analytical approach to measure the ESG impact for each leasing contract. With our new and unique GSI, Granke Sustainability Index. We felt inspired by the Nutri-Score for foods. We take our data and experience to measure the impact for ESG. And therefore, three levels are important. At first, the customer, the SME, for example, the industry or maybe individual ESG information. Second, the object, the investment of the small medium enterprise. And of course, the service we provide and the lessee choose. For example, a paperless contract is very important for that. And with that new GSI, we raise a treasure and accompany SMEs in the mandatory ESG transformation. Additionally, we will get important information about our portfolio across countries, sectors, and objects, which we will implement in our reporting. So we increase transparency for our SMEs, resellers, as well as for you, our investors. It raises awareness for sustainability and merge each environmental, social, and governance aspects in a simple index. And we create the starting point for incentives and the decision-relevant information for small-scale investments. We are testing now a prototype and want to have a scientifically certified or validated. An innovation I'm really proud of that set us apart from many other market participants and will certainly support our ambitions for further profitability, pref sorry, for further profitable and sustainable new business. So we have shown you a lot of figures and information today, none of which change our financial targets for 2022. As we continue to invest in our digital and compliance capabilities, our goal in 2022 is to generate a net profit of 75 to 85 million euros and achieving a new leasing business in the range between 2 and 2.2 billion euros. And this growth shall continue in the financial years to come. With these targets, we are on our way, well aware that we still have many challenges ahead. But from a strong starting point, and based on a strong acceleration of new business in our leasing operations worldwide. The transparency we've shown today will give you flavor to substantiate our ambition. As we shared with you today, the global footprint of Granke is driven by many Granke subsidiaries outside Germany. So we are sure that the way for future growth, and especially for a long-term growth, is a mix of our growth and our established core future core and hidden star markets. And based on the assumption that we will achieve this, we have set ourselves a historical milestone to double 2021's level of net profit and new business by 2024. As I mentioned before, we want to deliver quarter by quarter, consistently and steadily. Back to Michael for our concluding remarks. Yeah, can we do it together or not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, before opening up for questions and discussions, I would like, I would like to summarize. Come, it's in there. Yeah, I hope you yourselves will have felt during our presentation, Grenke is back. And walking through our halls in Baden-Baden or in our offices in the different countries, you can definitely feel it. And the numbers show it as well. Our effort to define the growth agenda already pay off. We explained the high growth opportunities 
for our business and Granker as a company. Our business model will be resilient to the risk we all foresee at the horizon. We have a unique and distinctive position in the small ticket leasing business for SME customer. And our business portfolio holds high potential and we will continue our growth path in our established markets according to the mega trend developments. And we address the enormous mid and long term growth opportunities in the future core markets like the US. And last but not least, we showed you how we will continue the value creation in our business model. model. So, given all this, we are very confident Grenke will, yet again, be a great stock to invest into. Thank you. Ms. Linnertz. So, thank you, Mr. Bücker, Mr. Dr. Hirsch, for your detailed explanations and the presentation. I'm sure we all have learned a lot. We will now take a short break, and for those of you with us in Frankfurt, you will find a buffet with snacks and drinks just outside this conference room. I ask you to be back at 12.15, when we will meet again for the Q&A session. So, thank you again, and see you at 12.15. <laughs>